I didn't really thrift until like two or three months ago, which is insane to me now. As you can see, I go quite a bit now. Okay, so let's try this angle out. So this is going to be a massive thrift haul. This is over the last two to three months of thrifting. I go once a week to different Goodwill, St. Vincent de Paul. There's Valley City Thrift, I think it's called. Um, yeah, so there's quite a few around Cincinnati. And I've had some good luck. So I'm really excited. And let's just show you what I got. Let's start with home. I am in the process of putting some things into a storage unit. So the only thing I think that I don't have with me currently for the home section is a beautiful copper teapot. And the handle was blue and white ceramic. It was gorgeous. So I think I got that for $5. And then to go with that, I found a copper fondue set. And this is amazing. And I thought this was like super rare to find. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And it is really cool. Um, but... I keep finding them all around Cincinnati out of nowhere, like they're everywhere. So I'm actually going to pick up one more next time I come across it. Watch, I probably jinxed it because I said there's so many of them. I'm probably not going to be able to find another for a minute. But it'd be nice to have one for cheese and then one for chocolate. So we really like our fondue and that's blinding. <laughs> I plan on having a whole section in our future kitchen where it's an exposed shelf and they have a bunch of copper accents on it so i thought those were good things to start with the last thing is going to be this gorgeous glass bowl and then it has this beautiful detailing around the rim i think this was four dollars from goodwill and i use it for a berry trifle dish um but you can use it for whatever for now that's great for me until i can find a decently priced square proper trifle dish but this is really good for desserts and hosting and all kinds of things like that so $4. I thought this was a good deal. Okay, so now we're going to go into the baskets. I've actually had quite a few housewarming gifts recently. So I did have a vintage um, picnic basket and I'll try to include a photo of the one I found. It was a vintage picnic basket. I used it for a housewarming gift. I put everything inside. It's really cute. And then I also had another beautiful basket. Um, I used that for a different housewarming gift. I've had quite a few people in my life recently move into new homes, so it's super exciting. And of course, I had to get them housewarming gifts, so no better place to go than Goodwill for your baskets. So I did have those two, and then I have this one. And this was a dollar, and I thought this was really pretty for Oakland's room. She's obsessed with carrying things in baskets. She's my little nature girl. She collects flowers, rocks, leaves, branches, so anything especially rocks recently. <laughs> so she puts these like into here and she just carries it around. It's really sweet. Or she'll put her little baby dolls in it. So for a dollar, I can't pass up on the baskets. Another one I got for a dollar is this beautiful one. I cannot believe I came across this. It must have been someone's Easter basket. It has flowers, butterflies, ladybugs. It's the sweetest little basket and it's in great shape for a dollar. I literally couldn't believe it. But she uses this all the time. I use this in her weekly toy rotation. You'll see that in a video coming up. They're like her little, like I said, nature treasure baskets. And we bring them with us everywhere. I have one more thing. This is, I guess it's a bowl, serving bowl. And it has three little flower serving cups to go with it. You could use it for different sauces and chips. But what I'm using it for is Oakland. I've been slowly collecting things for her homeschool when she does it in about a year and a half. So I've just been slowly collecting things that we could use. And I thought this would be really cute for sensory bins or when we're learning about things outside, I can put them into the little containers. I don't know, just something cutesy. And it was $3 for the whole set. So like really, I mean, I can use it if I need to for hosting. If not, then I'll put it in the learning bin. Okay, so now we're gonna get into clothes. So far, I have not had much luck at all with finding clothes at Goodwill and traditional thrift stores. I did find one blazer and I found one blanket scarf, so I'll show you that first. Oh, and a hat. I forgot about this hat. This hat, I mean, this is a work of art. It's so beautiful. Reminds me of the French Riviera. I did a photo shoot in this the other day for our family photos, and I think it's just so pretty and, like, whimsical. I think it's just so cute. So I'll include some photos using this beautiful hat. 
but the hat was four dollars from goodwill and it was brand new it still had the tags so that was a steal this was a big find and i still can't believe i still can't believe this because i went to go look up the pricing because i knew the brand was going to be expensive it's neiman marcus and i knew it was going to be expensive um but it's this preppy like blazer and it's a size medium here's the brand neiman marcus it's really pretty and i did a google search on this and someone was selling this blazer for four hundred dollars i'm like is that overselling it or are they normally like that expensive normally i'm a medium and things but this is a smidge too small i think designer things maybe run a bit smaller i'm not sure this was $7.99, so when I saw that it was on sale for $400 somewhere, I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to snag that. So I think this is really cute. It would be really cute with like a lace bodysuit underneath. The last thing I got from Goodwill was this blanket scarf, and I went ahead and washed this, and all the clothes I'm showing you I went ahead and washed outside of that blazer. This is like such a beautiful blanket scarf. It was $3. It's like this beautiful golden green color with navy and cream plaid going through it and it's a giant blanket scarf and then i went ahead and went to plato's closet and then i went to once upon a child a few times and they're like sister companies so we had a lot of luck i got this sweater from plato's closet it's really cute super soft it's like a cashmere almost woolish i don't know how to explain it but it's like a really nice material it keeps you really hot even though it's thin and yeah this was a good find I'm not sure which is going to be what, but I did keep the tags from Play-Doh's to try to help you. But now looking at this, there's just, there's no way I'm going to be able to go through all these. Just know that I did not spend over $8 on anything from Play-Doh's Closet. And this flannel, I'm pretty sure this flannel was six. The colors are so dreamy. Um, it's like a peach, peach, navy, army green, cream. I think it's so beautiful obsessed yeah this was a win and it's very thick and very soft this is from a target collection brand actually i have another sweater i went with the intention of finding sweaters because i really didn't have that many from postpartum this is from the brand bdg i've never heard of them but it's a size small and it's like this cream and it has this beautiful detailing and then the elbow pads. I thought this was precious. With my riding boots, this is really cute. And it's a good layering piece. I got two more things for me. And I had this little knit cardigan. I thought this was super cute to put over anything. It's a little knit cardigan. It's like a light pinkish cream peachy color. I don't know how to explain it. Um, but it's adorable. And it goes a little bit past my bum. And it has pockets. This is from the brand Candies, which I'm pretty sure is Kohl's. Yeah, that was really cute. I need more knit pieces like that and sweaters, especially with it being cold or in Ohio now. The last thing I got, which I'm a little on the fence for, let me know if you think this looks okay or not. But I found this hat, and when it's not on, super, super cute. Love the coloring, love the texture. Oakland has a mini one. It looks adorable. Um, but when it's on me, let's see. I don't know how the heck to wear these, like, without looking weird. Like, I don't know what the vibe is on putting these on. Let me know on how to style this. Typically, I go for more of a fedora type hat. But I think this is cute for the fall. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how to style this, so let me know if it looks okay or if there's a better way of styling it. I don't know. I think it was cute when it wasn't on. Now that it's on, I'm like, mm, do I like it? I don't know. Okay, now let's get into the baby clothes. This is all from Once Upon a Child. Nothing besides the boots right here was over $4. The boots were $7.50 and they still had the brand new price tag. Oakland is obsessed with the glitter on these shoes. They're stunning. Um, they match everything, so this was a really good find. These were $7.50, brand new, and they're from Carter's. Really cute. But everything else I'm about to show you is $4 and below. I found this outfit for $3. It's this little velvet 
cardigan or you can button it up for a shirt and it came with and it came with these pants so for three dollars i thought that was cute you can use them as separates or together i found this adorable little cottage blouse for her it's old navy and it's a cream color with gold detailing I thought this was super, super cute. Found a sweater. It says full of love and it's really soft on the inside. It's that, these are the kind of sweatpants you want to wear cause they're like fleece almost. But this is adorable. It's a little oversized on her, which I like that look rolling it up with some tight leggings. I think that's super cute. Okay. Found the most precious cat and jack. The lighting is changing from the sun, so please forgive the lighting. Um, cardigan. Oh, it's so beautiful how it sparkles. It's black with gold thread, and it's a precious. This is not the cutest thing ever. I think Oakland will love it. It's really soft. It's like almost like a knitted blanket, and it's really thick, so I think she'll be warm in this. I just realized I forgot to bring one thing down and I have a photo of it, so I'll include a photo, but we found these baby shark pajamas. I'm pretty sure they were baby boy pajamas, um, but they're green. So I think they're kind of like more gender neutral. I don't know, but they were $1.50 and Oakland is totally on the baby shark train. And I was really trying to push that off. But when you go to so many places and they're playing baby shark song everywhere and she's seeing like kids dance, of course she like jumps on board she like loves the song and the show Fenny the shark on youtube so yeah she's on the baby shark train officially and i found this jammies for dollar 50 and i also found these for dollar 50 they're fleece winter jammies and they have like little penguins with hats and christmas trees and then here's the top i thought these were really cute here's a flannel it's different shades of pink and navy. And then this one does not button all the way down. It just has three buttons here and it goes into a top. But this is really sweet. This is a good layering piece because right now it's in the part of fall where it's like really cold in the morning. Then it gets hot throughout the day. Staying on the plaid flannel train. We also found this little shirt for her. It looks like Cincinnati Bearcats color, so of course I had to snag it. Uh, red, and it has silver threading, and then black. Buffalo print, and again, it has like the, the A-line, I think they call that, and then the three buttons. I think this would be really cute on O. This top, and I just posted this in a vlog recently. Um, I just died when I saw it. It's this little like cottage core almost blouse. And it has this like rouging detailing right here. So beautiful. It looks like it has like little goldenrod flowers on it. I don't know. It's so beautiful and feminine. So this one oak will be precious. Here's a little yellow striped. And it has a ruffle going across. Cute. This dress she actually wore today for the first time. And I about died. It was so cute. It's a chocolate brown. And then it has like red and cream and different prints of pink flowers on it. I love it. I think it's so beautiful. And it's thick. It's a corduroy material. It's funny because these tops that are like solid usually come in a big pack from Carter's. And my mom recently got Oak this beautiful fall pack and it did have this exact top in it so now she has two which is fine because she wears it a lot um it's like this blush muted pink it's so beautiful and it's like just a, a plain plain onesie you know but it's good for layering this was a dollar and then we found these joggers for 250 and they're cream and these are also gender neutral so i love these for saving them for later on um they have fleece on the inside they have fleece on the inside again then a cute little drawstring, jogger bottoms. It's like this oat color. I think it's so cute. 
Oh, I lied. Okay, I have one more piece from Once Upon a Child. It's from Cat and Jack. And it's this gorgeous little vintage dress. I did just show this in that vlog the other day as well. <laughs> but it's really pretty. So feminine. Has this beautiful velvet ribbing detailing. And I think this will be really pretty during the holidays. It came with little emerald green bloomers. I think this is so cute. Vintage baby clothes always suck me in, which is where it's going to lead me to this piece. Um, there was this convention going on for like two days where they had like a crap load of baby things. So um, you can get kids toys, clothes, play kitchens, whatever. And it's like an event where you pay to get in and then it's like really cheap things. Of course, my friends all had like super great luck finding like $2, $3 things. And then here's me. I'm going to buy a $15 dress at a discount event. I don't know how I found the most expensive item they probably had clothes wise, but I could not pass it up. It's this like vintage dress and it's from the brand Cecile and Lou. And I think this was originally like 40 something. I got it for 15. It still looked brand new and it has a nutcracker. Let's see if I can get the sun. And then it has like nutcracker detailing. I think this is so beautiful. And then the back. And that's going to be something I'm going to keep so that she'll have it for whenever she has a little girl in the future if she does. And then this plaid Christmas dress was $4. And we have quite a few families to go to for the holidays. So we thought this would be really cute for one of them. There's a satin little bow, and then it just buttons up the back. It's her traditional Christmas print. And she's going to look like a little baby doll in this because she's so petite, and this is, like, huge for 18 months. So she's going to look like a little baby doll. I cannot wait. Okay, we're down to my favorite part. I found so, so many books. Children's books, adult books, so be it. I have everything. And I cannot wait to share this with you. Let's get started with the children's books because they're right here. This one is actually, I don't know, it's like a wooden book. And it has magnets. It's from Lisa and Doug. They no longer make this. But I thrifted this for $2.50. My sister came across it. Some of the magnets were missing. I think there's missing two or three in the whole book, which wasn't bad. I still bought it for $2.50. I mean, seriously. But it's a Montessori-based toy. And um, some of these are in Oakland's room right now because she plays with us every single day. But yeah, these little magnets go and then she can match them back up and it teaches you colors, primary colors. So this was a great find and we travel a ton. So this is something that keeps her entertained no matter where we go. This is a set from Goodwill and I could not pass up on it. It's like your traditional classic books but they're baby board books and it was $5 for all of them together. Can you see some of these names? I mean, they're like the most classic stories. We have Pride and Prejudice, uh, Moby Dick, Jane Eyre, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Jungle Book, Romeo and Juliet, Alice in Wonderland, and Sherlock Holmes. And they are so cute. The illustrations, let me just show you the Pride and Prejudice. It has like, it's just the cutest little board book. This one teaches her numbers. But it's so sweet. This is one of her favorite shows ever. So we watched Guess How Much I Love You every single morning. And now YouTube officially has like full episodes. So we have been binging those in the morning. But this one is Look What I Can Do, the Guess How Much I Love You book. And it's a pop-up. It was a dollar, so there's a few little piece is missing but I mean she's like one and a half so she doesn't even notice um and then there are still some that have like the little flaps she loves this book it's such a good one that show in general is so wholesome so if you have toddlers or babies look up guess how much I love you I think it's an Australian show it's like really wholesome okay so I have two more board books this is sheep in a jeep and it's funny because I had this on her Amazon list and then look at this i bought her for i don't know if it's even going to show it a dollar that's insane so yeah this is a really cute board book as well sheep in a jeep 
And then the old McDonald had a farm. It's a sing-along, you know, old McDonald. It's the most basic nursery rhyme. This was a dollar. Oh, this was 50 cents. I wonder why this was cheaper. 50 cents for this one. It was in great condition. The rest are books that I'm holding on to for either homeschool. Um, I'm still deciding which method I want to do. Um, I'm looking at the Charlotte Mason a lot with the live literature and things. And then, I don't know, I might incorporate a little bit of everything. I'm not quite sure yet. But I've been collecting books that I think will be useful whenever we start to cover certain topics. All of these were a dollar or a dollar fifty. There's this one. It is Explore the Amazing World of Animals. And it has like just great information on like anything animal related. Uh, my big book of trains. It shows a bunch of trains from around the world. I just thought that was so cool. I mean, that was a good book to come across. This one, Oliver's Treehouse Friends. This one looked really sweet. This was a dollar. And this one's more of like when she gets into like actually like reading and less pictures. But the illustrations are pretty. I've been looking for Jesus-based Christmas books for Oakland. So when I came across this one, I could not pass it up. This one is My Heart, Christ's Home, Retold for Children. So this is the book, and I think this is going to be really sweet to add to our collection. I have, I think I have like six or seven more books left. Is this one called Latisse or is this Lettuce? Because I swear I've been calling it Lettuce, but that's got to be wrong. There's no way they named this poor little bunny Lettuce. So <laughs> this is about teaching when things don't go right, how to make the most of it and how to fix it. So I thought that was a good message. All the pages are sparkly, like the detailing and all the dresses is like 3D glitter. So this would be a good sensory based book actually. I thought this would be good for when we start learning about the different elements. This one's called The Windy Day. And let's see if this one's pictures. This one's mostly pictures. So this is going to be a really good preschool and kindergarten book. Less words, more pictures. I found another book about animals. This one's really cool because it's actually in Spanish. So when we start learning Spanish, this would be a great way to help her become more bilingual quicker. Um, everything is literally in Spanish. And it's actually in Spanish cursive on a few of them and then it has Spanish in print. So this will be a really great book for her. These are the classic, if you're a 90s kid, let me know if you grew up on these, the I Spy books. I mean, seriously, I could not pass up on this book. Um, it's just your traditional I Spy. So cute. And I thought the cover on this one was stunning. The Velveteen Rabbit. I absolutely love this story. It's really sweet. And this one is pictures and words, like about equal. So I don't know. When she starts to get a more attention span, this might be a great one to pull out. This one has a really good message going places. And I actually have this on my Amazon book kids wish list and yeah, I'm so happy I came across it because I paid $1.50 and I think it's like 20 something on Amazon. So definitely check out Once Upon a Child for some books. I have three more and then we're into the adult books. This is Without You, about penguins. So we start learning about the Arctic. I thought this would be a really cool one to bring up. She has this book, um, board book version, and she loves it. It has the most stunning illustrations ever i'll show you a few of them but now we have the hardcover version so i'm really excited that she gets to continue on with this story once she's past board books on the night you were born and it's like the sweetest story ever and like i said the drawings are just stunning like music notes and dolphins really cute last one is black beauty 
classic story and she's really into horses which is great because I grew up being really into horses too so like I love that kind of got passed on to her um this one has beautiful illustrations as well a lot of words but then it has a lot of like big pictures as well so this will be a really good story for her and it's funny because I actually have that in the chapter version behind me so I have one for her and one for me okay we are almost through guys thank you for staying through and watching the video i have so many chapter books i i cannot even there are an array of books none of them are the same although i do tend to lean towards romance more than anything but there is a variety um this is simple abundance a day book of comfort and joy i thought the cover was really pretty and then this is supposed to like i don't know it has each month and cooking for comfort recipes um how to find the little simple joys of every day like it's just a good book creating good habits has something for each month so this would be an interesting book to go through since we're almost done i'm going to go ahead and scoot back and get a little more comfy um i found this cincinnati cookbook and it has a bunch of like vintage cooking recipes from like the early 1920s i thought that was neat they show you like how they did high high tea and a bunch of cocktails which i don't really drink but they have great food recipes spicy feta dip that would be interesting so just cool things and it's, it's really neat that it's from cincinnati seasoned savoring the queen city's spice of life are you noticing a theme if there's a good deal i literally have fomo and i cannot pass it up this one is wish come true I haven't read any of these, so I have no idea if they're good or not, but I based a book on one price, but then two um, of the cover looks interesting. And then I read the back and if that catches my attention, then sometimes I'll read the first few sentences and that's how it'll let you know if you think you might like a book. So that's what I got with all of these. I see this book in every single thrift store I go to. So Either it's really good because people are buying it or it's really bad because people are getting rid of it. So this could swing either way. It's Summer of Roses. I literally have seen this, I swear, like 10 times. So I finally picked one up. It was for 49 cents. This was a dollar. This is the House of Deep Water. Um, this one isn't something typically I go for. Apparently, it's very uh, it's very poetic in the way they write, and it's about family flaws, and I don't know. I have no idea. It's something I typically don't read, but it's good to have an array of things. Plus, I've been collecting books because my dream is to have a giant library in our house so that you can just go up and have, like, a section for everything. I cannot wait to have a home library. That's the ultimate dream. So I've been collecting books as much as I can so that I can fill those shelves one day. James Patterson, my aunt really likes his books and I've never read any. So I'm hoping I like his writing. Um, this one is Sale. And I think they're supposed to be like suspenseful books. This one is The Fortune Hunter by Daisy Goodwin. Uh, this one's supposed to be... I remember reading this being like, I'm either going to love this or hate this one. Um, this one's about Empress Elizabeth of Austria. There's no way, you guys, I just started The Empress on Netflix and it's literally this story. It is the story. I'm so excited to read this now. The Fortune Hunter. That's interesting. So now I'm like curious because I'm only three episodes in. So I wonder what that means. Um, so it says like Empress Elizabeth of Austria, known as Cece, the princess Diana of the 19th century Europe, famously beautiful as captured in a portrait with diamond stars in her hair. She is unfulfilled in her marriage to older emperor. Joseph Cece has spent years invading the stifling formality of royal life on a private train or yacht, wherever she can, or on the back of a horse. And it just goes on and on and on. I'm not going to read too much because I'm not that far in the show, so I don't want to like get rid of anything and right now she's happy in her marriage so just knowing that she's not going to be fulfilled i'm like we got some plot twists coming uh this one is deadline and this is supposed to be a suspenseful novel 
So we'll see if that's good. I usually don't read that genre, but I'm open to new things. Okay, I lied. I did start one book out of all these, and it was this one because the cover was just so stunning. It looks like one of those super old uh, paintings, like in Europe, you know what I'm talking about? I was like, oh, that's, that's gorgeous. I'm going to get that book. And then title got me, Our Lady of the Forest. I was like, that's interesting. You guys, <laughs> this book is so bizarre. It's so bizarre. I don't even know, like, maybe it's just the beginning. It's so weird. I don't know. You can definitely tell a man wrote this because when they're talking about, like, the female anatomy and, like, your monthly gift and things just hearing it from a guy's perspective it's so off on what you would do during that time and it's just been like the weirdest reading ever she like thinks she sees virgin mary but then she's like super into like masturbating it's like the weirdest book i've literally ever read um i've only read like two chapters and i'm like really struggling to get through that so i don't know if i'm going to finish this one it's just a little little out there stop it how did i buy this book twice how did I buy this book twice? I'm gifting it to somebody. That's it. I have this book twice. And I didn't even know it was on the show that I'm watching now. Like, this must be, like, serendipity. That's so bizarre. Why did I buy this twice? That's crazy. I'm going to gift it to somebody. Maybe my great aunt. She'd probably like it. <laughs> um, This one, I thought the colors were pretty. This one is The Chameleon's Shadow. And I was like, that sounds like a child's book. Then I remember reading it. Well, I lost the cover, so I can't quite remember. This one is by Edgar Sautel. And this one's beautiful, too. It's like a moody farm painting. The covers super suck me in. I, I'm a sucker for covers. I don't know. This one's going to be really interesting. The very first line is born mute and speaking only in sign. So I'm curious to see his perspective on what happens in his life. Apparently this is based on a true story. Potentially. Allegedly. I don't know. That is a really pretty cover and it sounds like an interesting read. We have a couple more and then I am done with this massive haul. I seriously can't believe I had luck even finding this many things this one is gonna be so different than my typical historic period romances because it's about the mental health and insane asylums and things like that so this one's called no one cares about crazy people and it's the perspective of someone with schizophrenia their true story in london seven centuries ago about the treatments and policies during world war ii era um what to do about crazy people it's this is going to be interesting so i'm curious to see like a perspective of someone with schizophrenia like what their mind is like this is going to be a cool one this one is a prisoner in the castle and this is i'm pretty sure this is about a spy as well um world war ii is raging and former spy maggie hope knows too much she knows what the British government is willing to do to keep its secrets. She knows the real location of the planned invasion of France. She knows who's lying. She knows who the double crossers are. She knows exactly who is sending agents to their deaths. These are the reasons Maggie is isolated on the remote Scottish island in a prison known as Killock Castle, out of contact with family and friends. So that's going to be pretty cool, actually. I might start this one soon. All right, we have... I don't know, like five more books, six more books. This one is Tell Me Lies. Everyone remembers the one. No, not that one. The other one, the wrong one, the one who couldn't let go of, the one you'll never forget. Um, let's see. It's about a girl named Lucy who arrives on campus in a small California college. She's quickly seduced by this vision of herself and the sense of possibility that attention brings her. Apparently, she meets this guy named Steven. They have this crazy toxic connection. I don't know. This will be interesting. It seems like maybe like a young adult book. I did not buy it for $7. <laughs> but someone did. And I bought it for a dollar. 
Oh, this one's beautiful. Gardenias. A novel. In the back, the women are so fabulously dressed. This one is about... All right, I'm noticing a theme. Lots and lots of World War II books. This is World War II as well. Um, this is the United States this time. The other one was London. Let's see. Breaking away from their Depression era. New opportunities in California. Arlene sells his family into a wartime housing project and secures a promising office job as a consolidated aircraft. There's this little book, The Angelic Year. Oh, I'm pretty sure this one, this one's about different, like, um, yeah, let's see, saints. Different angels, angels of the week. Thought this was cool. Spring angel, there's a prayer for it, praying through it. The Angel of Faith, Taurus, Angel of Beauty, Leo season, Angel of Fortitude. I don't know. It looked interesting. Not typically something I'd pick up, but I thought it was cool looking. This one is The Sight of You. Uh, breathtaking and painful and broken and perfect, just like love. So this is going to be a love story. The writers from Norfolk, England. Joel has sworn off falling in love, but when he meets Callie, he can't help being drawn to her. In Callie, he sees a second chance at life. And in Joel, Callie discovers the kind of love she'd always hoped was real. They challenge each other to take chances, to laugh, and to trust that no matter how hard each falls, the other will be there to catch them. But Joel has a secret. The sight of you. Would you choose love if you knew how it would end? That's an interesting question. Two more. My Black Beauty. Me and Oakland twinning. And then this one is going to be a really interesting read. Someone paid $16.79. And I didn't, definitely did not. Um, the Impossible First. This is a true story, and I remember reading this in the store and being like, okay, that's going to be a good one. I got it for a dollar. Okay, so this is what it's about. It's about Colin O'Brady. He's an explorer and elite endurance athlete who has set multiple world records and is a leading expert on mindset. Among his feats are the world's first solo, unsupported, and human-powered crossing of Antarctica. It tells about his experiences crossing Antarctica, doing the seven summits, uh, breaking records in 21 days. He's a Yale graduate. I don't know, it's really cool. So I guess it's going to tell you like how he overcomes immense obstacles and discovers what's most important in life. That's really cool that this is a true story. Can you imagine the brain power and willpower you would need to have to cross Antarctica by yourself? That's lonely. <laughs> That's all I can think of. That comes to a close. That is everything I got at the thrift stores from two to three months of collecting things. And I hope you enjoyed. This is something new, but I think I'm going to keep doing more thrift hauls because I thoroughly enjoy it and it gets me out of the house. <laughs> so if you enjoyed it, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.